quiet as it is right now for the Vancouver Canucks, I mean, the, the news cycle is never completely quiet. I know you wrote uh, earlier in the week about RFAs and potential trade bait for the Canucks. You know, we see it here in the third week of May. I mean, we're one month away from the draft. And we have seen in recent years that that is now, you know, the time and place that things happen around the National Hockey League. Uh, big deal. You can almost be sure that you're going to get a couple of big deals. Canucks have been active the last couple of years. So as quiet as it is now, you just kind of, you know, tough it out through this next month or so. And, you know, you can almost see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I, I don't think it's quiet at Rogers Arena. I think that this is the stage where they have to... Uh, uh, kind of narrow and focus their plans and, and their strategies of what to do next, which RFAs are they are they going to bring back, uh, which should they walk away from, and what may be the most important decisions are which free agents to target one, and number two, uh, which players to target via trade, and more importantly, who are they going to trade, right? Like I think a lot of people, you're right, are expecting the Canucks to be players at the draft in terms of transactions, trying to move bodies, trying to bring in a top four, preferably a right shot defenseman who can move offense. I mean, I think that the underlying question for this team, if it does want to get better for next year, and they seem to, I, I'm not sure that that's the right route, honestly, J-Pat. Um, I, I think suffering a year or two more uh, may be better uh, you know, for this team over the long haul. But they seem to want to be improved. They seem to want to be competitive for next year. And to do that, they have to answer this question, who the hell is going to score said goals?